What's up, guys, and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Our first question comes from Hiromatsu and Cosmic Outpost, who both ask what we think Project Luminous will be about. So I wanted to focus on that line, the new tagline that they released at New York Comic Con that was like, uh, the force is an energy field that surrounds and binds us, blah, 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 until dot, 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 Project Luminous. So yeah. what does that mean? The until threw everybody off, yeah. I think. <laughs> So it sounds like something about the force is going to change. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's all I really have. Uh, if it's like, I, I don't know, the, the, the fact that they are not releasing any information about this until after January makes me wonder if this is going to have something to do with post episode nine content. Mm -hmm. Like if the force changes in a dramatic way in the rise of Skywalker. Um, or I, I don't know, I, it could be something where the, the Jedi of old try to mess with the force. Like, so what's the line again? Uh, the force is an energy field that surrounds us and binds us, uh, until. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, to me, that sounds like post episode nine, but I would have thought that they'd go way back. For these stories. I, I think that too. Or that was my assumption that anything that we explore after the sequel trilogy is going to be in the past. Because I think they're going to want to wait until we explore the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have so little context here. Like maybe this is in the past and the Jedi do something to change the force and it affects maybe it like in, in Legends, Sidious and... Uh, Plagueis inadvertently caused the birth of Anakin because they are messing with the Force and they're trying to push it to the dark side and then the light side pushes back by creating Anakin. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not true anymore. And I, I think the Lucasfilm Story Group has even tried to push back against that idea. But maybe the Jedi could do something like that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was really hoping that this would be some like something really old like almost like the birth of the force or the birth of the jedi and like where they originated from but i don't know yeah i don't think it can be that now if the force is this thing and well i don't know if the force was this thing that was for like all life until the jedi came along and kind of made it theirs mm -hmm. so yeah we could be like way way in the past yeah but for now with that until sitting there i guess i'm gonna go with post episode nine somehow the force has changed forever i i yeah i i don't know i i think i want to go pre-era content and just say it, it will still be about the force changing but i i'm still skeptical that they would want to jump directly into what happened after episode nine right away yeah uh, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Bluebolt76 and Verpine95 want to know what new books and comics we're most excited to read. So I, I guess this is from the New York Comic Con announcements. Right. Uh, I think right off the bat, I'm excited about anything Charles Soule does. And he's a busy guy because he's going to be doing, I assume, comics for Project Luminous uh, and the Kylo Ren comic. And he's going to do the rebooted Star Wars comic. I think out of all that stuff, I'm kind of... I, I'm excited for the Kylo Ren thing, but the Star Wars comic, the main line, has just been really inconsistent to me. Like, sometimes I love it. Sometimes I'm like, I don't really... I'm not into this at all. <laughs> but Charles Soule has done nothing but great stuff for Star Wars comics. So I'm really excited to see him take over the flagship title. Yeah, I think... Project Luminous stuff aside, I think I'm most excited to read the Kylo Ren comic. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, there's so many questions about what happened to him. Yeah, I mean, I really hope we get to see, like, the Knights of Ren and how they kind of got started and just, I don't know. That's by uh, Charles Soule as well. Yeah. Yeah, so. There's also the Clone Wars anthology, and I'm a sucker for those. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just like having those little collections of vaguely connected short stories. Uh, I always loved the tales from books and legends, and I really loved from a certain point of view. Hope they do one for Empire, but the fact that we're getting a Clone Wars one is exciting to me. Um, I'll say the when I heard that there was going to be another Thrawn trilogy, I was surprised, and I'm kind of, I don't know, I say this all the time, cautiously optimistic because... I don't know, I just wasn't a huge fan of this Thrawn trilogy, and it is cool that they're going into the Chiss Ascendancy, so I think that might push it over the edge for me um, and make it more interesting, but I was like, really? I was hoping that they were going to do Chiss Ascendancy stuff, but without Thrawn. Um, (laughs) I mean, like, I feel the same way. I really, really loved the first Thrawn book. Alliances I wasn't as into, and Treason really kind of bored me, so... I'm okay taking a break from Thrawn, and I would be like, yeah, let's follow Eli Vanto and Admiral Aralani and see what they're doing. Uh, the fact that we're just going into the past to explore more Thrawn, I guess, I, yeah, I love the Ascendancy, so that aspect of it is exciting to me, but I'm a little wary of just continuing to make Thrawn the straight-up protagonist, because I feel like he works better as an antagonist. Cat Lover asks if we read any movie leaks or if we try to go into the movies blind. I wanted to cover this in a video just because this is the most public way to remind people that no, I don't read leaks. Uh, I try to stay far away from them. And some people like will send us link uh, leaks, links to leaks, yeah. even. <laughs> and like it's never malicious. It's usually not malicious, but sometimes it's just people saying, "Ooh, did you see this?" And, like, I don't want to know. So I'm just reminding people, like, we don't deal with leaks. I like to go in blind. I like to have no expectations. Well, I mean, I don't know if they meant it this way, but going in totally blind as in, like, not actively not trying to see the trailers or, like, read anything we we have to do that stuff. I'm not, well, I'm not that strong. Like, (laughs) uh, I, I... We'll watch all the trailers and anything that is official marketing stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I eat it up. Um, but I don't go to Reddit and I seek. I don't seek out leaks. Uh, I see people on Twitter like going back and forth about whether or not this leak or that leak is real, and they're being pretty good about not saying what they're talking about. But I'm just like, it's nice to not be on that like side of things where it, like you're just freaking out about things that probably aren't true. I see you on r slash Star Wars leaks. Yes, but that's because that's the best subreddit I think to keep up with news on. Like news they, does travel fast there, and they are so good about like not putting spoilers in their titles. Yeah, they're they're very good at like making sure you know that this is a potential plot leak before you yeah. would even read it or click on it. Like I, I really like that community because they are just like news or they'll say like there's a leak in here and Mm -hmm. they won't say what the leak is and that's great i feel safe going there just to keep up with news yeah um but yeah and like i don't have anything against people who follow leaks like enjoy your fandom however you want i've had some people say like knowing a little bit about what to expect has made things better for them and Mm -hmm. that's just not the way i like to enjoy my movies yeah i mean if you see people claiming that they have a source leaking them plot information it's it's just not true (laughs) that's like it might be but we've all seen people saying that like so and so told me this some anonymous source told me this and like how many times has it just like not been true at all so that's why i'm like i don't bother with any of that stuff i don't like reporting on i don't want to report on it because i don't want to know about it so (laughs) i want to be a fan first and a YouTuber second. I want to go in and enjoy the movie and be surprised by it the way the filmmakers and the storytellers want me to be surprised and not be like, oh yeah, I knew Maul was alive and he'd be in Solo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want that to be a big thing. Yeah. Jamie Dore wants to know if there will be a future for Star Wars after the Skywalker saga. I mean, short answer, yes. But I wanted to say something before we really get into it, because uh, Jamie framed this question in a way that I liked, where 
he said that uh, episode seven and episode eight have disappointed him. And he said that if episode nine disappoints him, then he's probably going to be done with Star Wars. And I just wanted to say, like, that's the healthiest way to handle that. Like, yeah. It, there's nothing wrong with disliking the sequel trilogy. And if you are just not happy with Star Wars under Disney's ownership, I think the best thing to do is just be like, well, Star Wars isn't for me anymore. I'm going to go enjoy something else. Yeah. That's perfectly valid. Yeah. And I understand, too, on top of that, just being heartbroken about it. Yeah. But... There is going to be more Star Wars content coming out in the next few years, and maybe something down the line will catch your eye. You know, keep keep an eye on it. You know, don't completely write it off, but it's okay to have loved something and then it changes and then you don't like it anymore and you don't have to talk about it all day every day online <laughs> yeah i mean there have been things that i have just like left the fandom of because it just went a direction that i wasn't into anymore and I, none of them i've loved as much as star wars so like i get that there's an extra level when it's star wars but uh i did think this was an interesting question because i've been thinking about it and i think there will be an uphill battle after episode nine like we're gonna have three years of no movies and then we're going to get probably one of these trilogies that is going to have no connection to the Skywalker saga. Mm -hmm. And I think that part of the reason that uh, Star Wars, the sequel trilogy has done so well is that, yeah, it's connected to um, this 40 years of storytelling. And I think that there are good and bad sides to that. But now it's going to be like, well, will like if we're going to do an older public story, are we going to have enough of if it's just the Sith and the Jedi and lightsabers and like that's the only real connection? Will the general just movie going audience be excited about that? Like I know I will be. Yeah. But will everyone? I don't know. I, I mean, I think they will. But yeah, I think this conversation has been popping up since the original trilogy came out. They were talking about it after that ended. Uh, is there a future for Star Wars? And then the prequels came out. And then after that, is there a future for Star Wars? And at this point, we do know for sure that there are things in the works for the future of Star Wars. Um, but there are always going to be gaps. And there's always going to be something new coming along that's different. Yeah, I mean, after the prequels, no one expected more Star Wars movies. I didn't. Uh, I think that after the originals, it was always kind of floating around that George was going to do episodes one, two, and three. Um, but after the prequels, it was like, well, I guess that's it. We're just back to books and comics. Mm -hmm. um, now there's definitely more of a future. It will be kind of interesting the next three years after nine, where like we're going to have TV shows, which is already uh, a step up. Um, and the books and the comics, I think, are going to have a solid plan probably go like they're probably going to build up to whatever is coming next um but yeah there's definitely a future i don't think that star wars is ever going to you know really die like <laughs> it, it it had a complete wasteland in between the, the originals and the prequels and then the prequels and now we're not a wait like it was just books and comics mm -hmm. and most people most of the people that go to see those movies don't read the books and comics. So, like, that was just for the, you know, hardcore 10%. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I assume that'll be enough to sustain us for three years. And then when the movies come back, uh, like, I'm expecting them probably to take a, a box office hit. Maybe. I don't think that they're going to yeah. make the same amount of money as the sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be all new characters and probably all new ideas. It'll be interesting to see. They're just going to have to market the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and something else that comes to mind for me is like, after the prequel trilogy came out, there was a huge amounts of controversy and an uproar of the fandom about the trilogy and what they didn't like about it. Now, people love it. Yeah, it's it's a cyclical it's, thing. It's and you know that's gonna probably happen for the sequel trilogy a couple years down the road. People are gonna who who are growing up 
watching the sequel trilogy that are a few years younger are going to pra- like praise it to no end at some point in the future, just like the prequels are getting that kind of attention now. And I don't know. I, I think No, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's going to happen, and it'll continue to happen. Yeah, I think that whatever someone grew up on, like I grew up on the original trilogy, so that's my gold standard. That's what I compare Star Wars to. People who grew up on the prequels, that's what they compare Star Wars to. Like, that's just what Star Wars is to them. So everyone has this different opinion, and it's going to be cyclical like that. There are fans now that, like, they are going to compare everything in Star Wars to the sequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I wanted to point, like, I do think that they're not going to make... Th- these next set of films probably won't make as much as the sequel trilogy. Uh, but that's fine, too. Like, I think they'll do well. Yeah. And people act like, you know, if every Star Wars movie doesn't make Avengers money, <laughs> then... <laughs> Like, the franchise is in trouble, and, like, it doesn't have to be the biggest and best thing at all times. Right. And, like, Star- I don't think Star Wars is now. Yeah. I guess I think the MCU is, like, the king of fandoms. Like, I that's mean, what most people just, yeah, I enjoy the MCU. I, I go see all the movies, and... They keep making those Fast and Furious movies. Yeah, okay, yeah. Fast and Furious is the king of <laughs> the franchise <laughs> fandom. Uh, we're going to switch over to Fast and Furious Explain. <laughs> Still haven't seen Hobbs and Shaw, though, so... Eh, pass. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Ted Fox asks if we ever have to take a break from Star Wars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that we just take breaks throughout the week. Like, yeah, this is our job now to keep up with Star Wars news and Star Wars content and... Yeah, like, today that we're recording this, four comics came out. Like, that's a chunk of my day, Mm -hmm. uh, reading and analyzing and stuff. So I just try to make sure that in the evenings, I'm reading something else. I'm spending time uh, with other fandoms. Like, right now, I'm reading the Expanse books because I'm excited for season four, trying to catch up on the books before that comes out. Uh, I, I think it's just healthy to not get tunnel vision and spend all your time doing one thing yeah i mean i feel like if you do spend too much time in you know just thinking and contemplating about everything star wars related you're gonna get stuck in a couple of different places that you you know are going to lead to maybe being upset about something that you wouldn't normally be upset about and you know, it shouldn't cause you anxiety or, like, it, it shouldn't disrupt the rest of your life if something about Star Wars bothers you. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, this is a fictional universe that's supposed to be fun. Yeah. And it's supposed to teach you lessons. And one of those lessons is balance. And so... There you go. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, enjoy Star Wars. Like, I mean, I would even say that I have an unbalanced life with Star Wars. Uh, taking in every single bit of content and creating a life around Star Wars is not the most balanced, but that's why I tried to, you know, do other things and uh, also just get offline. Like, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. Get off the grid. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like now so much of our lives has become uh, entrenched in YouTube and Twitter and stuff that like I have had to make a concerted effort to go like be with my friends in real life and like we're doing improv together and stuff and that is so freeing to be like oh yeah this is reality Mm -hmm. and like what real life is and not the online part because if you spend too much time in in star wars or online or anywhere like that just starts to shape the way you think yeah and other people that spend too much time talking about and thinking about Star Wars will start saying things and then their words will start to shape your opinion. And it's like this whole back and forth with the, the community that spends so much time talking about it and breaking it down. And it's like, I don't know. Like, no, no, I I think that's (laughs) very true. Like I have seen people say like on Reddit, uh, I've seen people say, well, Star Wars explained says this and like, they're using, what we have said to shape their opinions and i'm like 
our but, opinion isn't any more important. Like, make your own opinions. Yeah. We're just two fans that sit and talk about it. And, like, I happen to like trivia and that kind of snowballed into this thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean anything more than that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all about perspective. And, I don't know, if you just look at your life and big picture-wise... Being on the internet, talking about Star Wars, it's fun. It should be fun. If it's your job, that's like a whole different kind of category of how you separate Star Wars from real life. But we still, I think, do a fairly good job at it. Yeah, I mean, we just have this philosophy of this is Star Wars. It should be fun. It's not worth arguing over. That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where we left you a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month will get you access to extra Star Wars Explained content, like audio commentaries for the films and for the Clone Wars episodes, and this week's episode is Sphere of Influence, so that's all available right now if you're interested. On to YouTube questions, G. Collins asks if we'll do a lore play for Jedi Knight 2 on the Switch. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will do a Jedi Knight 2 lore play, but not on the Switch, only because getting the Switch hooked up to a computer and to OBS is such a pain. I tried to do it a couple weeks ago, and it's just so annoying. If anyone has any ideas on how to capture stuff on the Switch that's easier... Yeah, I know how to do it. Oh. It's just terrible. Like, you need so much stuff. I needed to bring, like, a third monitor in, and it was just a lot. Uh... But I have it on PC, so I'll just do that. Yeah. Um, but the next lore play series, they're coming back, and it will be Fallen Order, because uh, that's the big one. And then, yeah, I do want to revisit the Dark Forces series. I'll probably wait to do Jedi Knight 2 uh, until I do Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight. That series is it Dark Forces, Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, and then, like, it's a lot. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but I'll probably do Dark Forces 2 and then Jedi Knight. <laughs> Bearcat5050 wants to know if the Empire actually did any good anywhere for the benefit of the galaxy. This is an interesting question. Um, I am going to say yes. I am too. Uh, they gave people jobs? Well, that's their thing is they brought... Peace and security. Uh, and I think that they did that. The question is more their methods. Yeah. Uh, how did they go about doing that? And that's where things get dicey. And that's where they are the bad guys. Yeah. Uh, but like in between all the really terrible things that they did, they like I said, they still were giving people jobs and probably saving some people from being homeless or criminals. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I do think that, yeah, some planets like Vardos saw uh, a lot of growth under the Empire. It just kind of depended on what your planet had to offer, because places like Lothal, the Empire didn't really care about it other than what it could provide. So they would just rip it apart. And they were, they were all about, like, uh, helping out the core worlds over the Outer Rim. And the Outer Rim was much more disenfranchised. Unfortunately, that still seems to be the case under the New Republic. But uh, yeah, I do think that the Empire did some good or else there wouldn't be such like fervent, devout followers. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that they did some good through some very bad ways. Yeah, and I think another way to look at it is they did good inadvertently. So like they did a lot of studying on for technology and made some advancements there that then the good guys could maybe use and steal or i mean that's stuff that happens in real life yeah and then d training fighters potentially those fighters could defect and go to the resistance Iden versio comes to mind yeah <laughs> that is interesting to see like to think about the the soldiers the heroes that the empire trained so that they could then come and fight against the empire so yeah you're right about inadvertent good as well carbonite hunter asks why luke couldn't be trained by obi-wan from a younger age 
Because bet, episode four was done first. <laughs> I bet we'll f- have this answered in the Kenobi series. That's possible. Uh, He's, think, he was off doing other things. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Luke will be eight, I think, at that point. Eight or 11. I can't remember if it said it would be 11 years or eight years after Sith. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's Either way, that's still too old. Yeah. I think that it was probably a case of just trying to keep him hidden and secret. Uh, and since they didn't change his last name, they were like, well, we better do everything else we can to make sure no one knows this kid is force sensitive or important. Yeah. And also, I think maybe he could, like Obi-Wan wanted to wait until he was mature enough to be able to handle eventually finding out that the person he has to fight is his father. Because if he were younger, it would be like a Ben Solo Kylo Ren situation, potentially. I mean, Luke was younger than Kylo Ren when he found out. Kylo is just a little angry person. <laughs> a little and angry I was, person. I was also going to say that Luke was not mature in A no. New Hope. <laughs> he was so whiny. Uh, I mean, yeah, the truth of it is just because they did episode four first, and that was the story that George wanted to tell first. That was the important one to him at that point in time. Mm-hmm. And so... Like, those rules weren't established yet. Yeah. So that's the true answer. But I think that it's really a matter of, like, oh, if he trains and becomes powerful in the Force, like, the Inquisitors are going to come find him because they were out hunting the galaxy for Force-sensitive children. So I think it was just a, let's not tell him. Yeah. Or maybe it's much more simple, and Uncle Owen and Amberu just really needed him on that farm. And they got the farm to a certain point, and then Obi-Wan was like, all right, I can steal their kid now. (laughs) Well, I don't think you're completely off base there, because Owen did not like Obi-Wan, so that's another aspect of it, that he was like, you stay away from my kid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The Bleaker wants to know if we think there is too much Vader content lately, and which are the most worthwhile. Uh, There is a lot of Vader content out there. Uh, like, he says this in his comment, that it's mostly in the comics, and I definitely agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're on our fifth series right now, and there's another one coming. And, like, I understand it. Vader's incredibly marketable. <laughs> and, I, like, he's an incredible character. He's cool. You know, he's scary. His, but, yeah. I, I'm at the point where I'm like, what else is there to learn? That's Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like... What else is in his story? Where can they fit it? You know, between when there was Anakin and then Vader and then Vader's death. Like, there's only so much, like, stuff that they can fill with stories. I do think that this next uh, series that's coming out, I'm like, okay, this sounds like it could be uh, as as worthwhile as the Charles Soule series which i would say is by far the most worthwhile Mm -hmm. uh it's incredible and i think that yeah there is some stuff to explore about vader in between episodes five and six because just like luke i mean his world is being turned upside down uh so i think that that's probably going to be a good series but like vader dark visions and the current one target vader like it's about a bunch of bounty hunters that are trying to assassinate vader and i'm like well i already know that well dengar is gonna live because he's in the empire strikes back (laughs) and then like they tease like oh there's a traitor in their midst i'm like it's dengar because he's alive in the empire strikes back it's dengar yeah all these other guys are gonna die (laughs) uh and vader's not gonna get assassinated so i'm like there's so little tension in that series that i'm like i think what they might be doing is using vader to tell these other little stories about other characters and bringing these other people in like they're saying it's a vader thing to get people's attention but then they're into introducing this whole like mini subplot and all these new characters that where they can potentially take el- elsewhere sure dr afra got her start in the kieran gillen vader series and yeah. I-, I like that one too and vader immortal we haven't even mentioned but those have been a lot of fun and yeah. I-, I would call them very worthwhile it's just like there's such a high uh, entry level to experience those yeah that's the vader immortal storyline is so different mm-hmm. from everything else that i think that that's really cool and innovative but 
No Buzz Lightbeer asks if Disney will ever be able to bridge the gap between old and new Star Wars fans. I don't really think they need to. Yeah. I mean, what? how would they bridge the gap? Well, I guess when I see people talk about, like, the Star Wars fandom is divided, like, it's not really as divided as we think it is. As, like, hardcore fans, I think that there are, like... <laughs> so you got, like, your... Let's imagine a, a loading bar or whatever. <laughs> like, there's 100% of the Star Wars fans... And on this side are like the 5% that are super positive about it. And on the other side, there's 5% that are really angry about it. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, that, are, that part is divided. Those two sides are the ones on Twitter. Right. And on fa and making all these Facebook groups and YouTube channels. Right. And yeah, everyone else in between is just like, oh, a new Star Wars is coming out? Cool. Pretty much. I'll fit that into my schedule when I have time. Like, most people who are Star Wars fans don't take it nearly as seriously as we do, or the the really angry people. So, yeah, I think that Lucasfilm is focusing on uh, attracting a new generation, and I think that that's what they've always done. Like, I think that's what the prequels were for. Mm -hmm. I was young enough that I was like, I saw Phantom Menace, and I was like, this is amazing, and I was like, also old enough that I was reading reviews and i'm like why don't people like this yeah so yeah i think that each new saga trilogy whatever each new animated show is going to focus on getting new fans and getting them young mm -hmm. uh and then i think that they know that yeah we're gonna lose some of the older fans along the way they're gonna grow out of it or whatever and that's just like an acceptable that's, consequence of doing business. That's where people will say Lucasfilm doesn't care about the fans, the hardcore fans, which just isn't true. And, you know, one of the things, one of the biggest things that I think Disney is doing for Star Wars to save it is giving us content for all different age groups. Mm -hmm. And they will continue to do that. So there will always be something for everyone something that yeah i have thought about is that we've got these two new trilogies coming and you got like your ryan johnson trilogy and your benioff and weiss trilogy i kind of think that they are going to be targeted at separate parts of the fandom uh because obviously we know there's a group of people who won't see the ryan johnson trilogy uh but i think that if we had Benioff and Weiss and they did something that was just like hardcore Star Wars battles, like mm -hmm. I think that's more targeted to the older base. Yeah. So I think that the trilogies might be like, this is for you guys and this one's for you guys. Yeah. They're, and yeah, it'll be staggered and, you know, you can't please everybody. Right. But I think something that Disney is definitely doing right that lucasfilm hasn't really done in the past is offer enough content for all age groups yeah i mean i think that in the legends days eh, like i guess i read the novels growing up but there were plenty of like uh middle grade books to read as well so yeah i think they did offer that but it was still just books and then like the clone wars was the first thing that was something for the kids and mm -hmm. then yeah I, I do think that there's a much bigger mix um i do kind of think that lucasfilm's priority is getting new fans and uh that that just doesn't upset me like i can i can enjoy resistance yeah it's not my favorite star wars thing in the world but i look forward to that little like star wars fix every week i'm i'm glad that it's back yeah i mean anything as timeless as star wars uh, I'm trying to think of other examples, but like most franchises are just constantly trying to bring in new people. It's not a new concept. It's not something that only Star Wars is doing. Yeah. That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion and get a guaranteed written response from us. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.